Hey guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mia and I run a small business, Blush Designs Co, where I make hand tufted goodies. I also sell some accessories for your car and your desk. I'll leave the link down below as always. In today's video, I am going to be talking all about wholesale. I have gotten so many questions on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, just anywhere about wholesale and how I go about doing wholesale. I know in my studio vlogs, that's pretty much what I work on like 85% of the time. I'm working on wholesale orders and I just kind of want to give you guys the lowdown. I want to tell you some things that I wish I knew before starting wholesale and I want to talk about some of the pricing tips and little things that I've learned along the way because I think I've been wholesaling for about a year and a half now so I'm by no means an expert but I have learned a lot in the past year about wholesale and selling wholesale on different platforms. So I don't want this to be a super long intro. I kind of just want to get into things and talking about wholesale so I'll kind of just give a background on what wholesale is. If you are clicking on this video you probably already know what wholesale is but basically wholesale is when a business sells their products or items to another business at a lower cost than the MSRP which is manufactured suggested retail price so that's basically just the retail price at what you sell your items for so that they can then sell the items that you've sold to them for a profit with their own business so I sell my mug rugs I sell my air fresheners I sell stickers at wholesale price so they order a bulk amount and usually that's typically anywhere from like you know 15 to 30 units and and they will then buy it at a lower cost so they can sell each individual item in their own store at a profit or at a markup and then make profit off of that product so this is very common and a lot of businesses do this especially when you are doing for example my slippers they are ordered at a wholesale price and then I go and I sell them myself so I order them from a business where I get bulk I order like 100 200 at a time and I get them at a lower cost so that I'm able to get them in for my business and sell them at a higher cost so that I can make a profit so that's kind of what wholesale is and just a little bit of a background on that. Um, a lot of people kind of don't know whether they should do wholesale or if they shouldn't. So I'm looking at my phone because I have notes as well. If you guys don't know, I'm not good at memorizing information, so I have notes. But a lot of small businesses that I know offer wholesale as part of their business. Whether that's like 80% of their business or a small part of their business, they offer it. And some people offer their whole product catalog and some people offer only a couple of products from their like product selection that they have. So me, for example, I am currently working on decreasing my wholesale catalog. I no longer sell cups and mugs, so I don't offer those wholesale anymore. And I have a couple of items that I still haven't listed wholesale wise. So like my desk pads and my mouse pads and stuff like that. So those are not currently on wholesale, but I would like to get them. So for me, I sell my whole product catalog wholesale. I do handmade and I have ready in stock items that I do wholesale for, which we'll get into a little bit later. But when you're thinking about wholesaling and if you're a new business and you're kind of, you know, interested in the the idea of selling your products wholesale you should really think about two key things how much does each of your products cost to make or cost to like buy if you get them manufactured? So basically how much is the cost per item? And then also, are you able to sell this item at a lower cost than what you would sell it to say, for example, a customer, the retail price and still make a profit and be able to continue to run your business and fund your projects and you know, pay your bills at the end of the day. So those are kind of the two key things I think that you should think about before starting wholesale. It's a great thing to start, but it is kind of overwhelming and very stressful at the beginning and then also if you start to get really really busy it can become very overwhelming and very hard to kind of get a grasp on things don't kind of already have a foundation or a strong base that you start off with how can you sell wholesale and where can you sell it so I use a platform called fair wholesale and that is where a lot of my wholesale orders come from I also sell wholesale through email inquiries so sometimes retailers will reach out to me and see if I offer wholesale which I do they can order directly through me or they can order on my fair account I am really like in different Different as to where they order. Fair Wholesale does have a lot of fees associated with it but we'll talk about that a little bit later because I really like their platform and I think that they have a really good way that they you know market your business in a similar way to Etsy but they do it really well and especially because people are ordering really like bulk and big orders most of the time it, it's worth it so anyway you can sell on those two ways I think there's another platform called Abound and I think it's only for Americans so I have no idea about that because I am a Canadian so any 
anything that I talk about when it comes to business related or registering a business or anything that has to do with that I'm speaking from my Canadian perspective because I can't speak on an American perspective because I'm not from the US so I'm speaking from a Canadian lens if that helps as well so here are a couple of things that you should think about before you start wholesale and maybe kind of get a notepad out plan it out get your iPad whatever you need to do and this might help you brainstorm some ideas on where you should start in terms of pricing platforms like all that kind of stuff first thing that you should do is figure out pricing I think this is one of the most pivotal moments and parts about wholesale is you're a business you obviously need to make money and if this is your full-time job you need to pay the bills at the end of the day so you need to be making a decent amount of profit to you know cover your overhead expenses and then also be able to survive with life especially because prices are so high these days so you need to figure out pricing and what is the cost per item or what is the cost of materials and labor that all if you're a handmade business materials and labor and overhead expenses all go in to the cost per item I know that for me I am primarily a handmade business with the exception of a couple of things like my air fresheners and my slippers so a lot of my product pricing is very complicated and intricate because of the amount of materials that I use I have to do a lot of math so math in high school definitely prepared me for this to do a lot of math and it's not really as simple as like one cost and then I mark it up because there's a lot of different materials I have to also calculate the labor cost because I am the one making it and it, labor isn't free time is money baby so that goes into the cost so first I would suggest to kind of sit down and write down all the different products that you want to sell and then go through and price those items and see how much each item costs to make or to sell like each cost of the item another thing you want to think about is what's going to be the markup for these items and it has to be lower than the MSRP which again is the manufactured standard retail price and basically in short it's just the retail price what you sell it for on your website so if you sell on fair your prices have to be lower than your retail price and that just makes sense because you can't sell something at wholesale price and it not be wholesale price because then you're not being you know authentic so basically it has to be lower typically it's usually half of what the retail price is but again it's not as simple as that always so sometimes you have to do a little bit more math and factor in a couple of extra expenses and things like that so we'll cover pricing in a little bit later these are the things you kind of want to get thinking about as you begin thinking about wholesale and whether you should start it whether you shouldn't that's something you want to think about another thing is if you're a primarily handmade business this is something that I definitely had to think about when I was starting wholesale was how many of these items are you able to make per hour per day per week per month that will help you figure out your labor cost how many you're able to actually provide because like I said wholesale is where retailers are ordering bulk from your business so you need to be able to produce or provide a decent amount of stock are you going to be outsourcing them are you going to be hand making are you going to switch to outsourcing if you start getting a lot of orders for things and then you have to factor in the cost of outsourcing because a lot of the times it costs more to outsource than it does to make it at home so those are the different things that you kind of need to think about when starting it and sometimes it's cheaper to make them in-house because you end up being able to make a profit whereas if you were to outsource something like for example stickers it's a lot harder to sell stickers that are outsourced at a wholesale price at least for me in Canada where I can get them at the different places that I am able to get them at is a lot harder for me to make a profit with outsourced stickers rather than making them at home which is the main reason why I make all of my stickers in-house with the exception of like my holographic stickers and my clear stickers now let's talk about some of the fees on fair I know that's like a very big question for anyone who is using like a third-party platform that is kind of acting like an Etsy and so I really like fair and I want to preface this to say like I'm not sponsored or anything by fair like I'm just talking about my honest opinions about this platform because I've used it for a while now but um, so here are the fees breakdown I'll put it on the screen for you as well because sometimes visually seeing it helps opening orders has a commission fee of 15% of the total cost of that order plus $10 US all the prices on fair are US then reorders so returning customers on fair are only 15% commission fee and there's no like plus ten dollars then you have a fair direct link when you have when you sign up with fair you have a link that you can put in your bio in your YouTube description whatever where retailers who aren't already on fair can click that link and shop directly with you I think they get a perk of like a hundred dollars off on their first order but when they shop directly through you and use your direct link fair takes zero percent commission which means you get the full cost minus any payment processing fees which is really great because it definitely helps support the business owner like 
like directly so when you have a fair or if you have a fair you should definitely suggest retailers and really promote that link it really does help directly support you and it also gives the retailer a perk as well by getting some money off and I think they get like free shipping on their first order as well and then the payment processing fee they have a, a couple of different options you can do I think you can do next day or two days you can do 30 day payment or you can do 60 day payment so the longer the payout date is the lesser the fee I have 30 days because 60 days is just way too long for me and that would never work at 30 days you have a 2.4 percent plus 30 cents US payment processing fee so when you go to get paid out that will be deducted from your payout and go into your bank account now speaking about bank accounts if you are Canadian like myself I was so stressed when I was signing up for fair because I had no idea that this was a thing I couldn't connect my bank account to fair and I was like what the heck what is a routing number I don't even know what that is come to find out that is a US bank account respective number so what I had to do was I had to get a third-party bank wiring company thing that will actually accept the funds from fair and then from that I'll be able to convert it into Canadian dollars and then be able to e-transfer it to myself so that app is called wise I have a link down below if you want to check them out I'm not sponsored by them but I do have a link um, an invite code that if you sign up with my link you get a fee free transfer up to $800 Canadian so that will waive the fee up to $800 for you so if you do want to check that out I'll leave the link for that down below now that we've talked about fair let's talk about wholesale pricing and how you can price your items and how you should kind of go about doing that again I'll leave some of the calculations and stuff on the screen because it's easier to see than it is to hear when it comes to math at least for me so basically the calculation that I use for pricing my items and cost per item since I make a lot of my items is materials plus production wages plus overhead expenses plus overhead wages equals the cost. To get the production wage for my item, what I do is I set the amount of money per hour that I want to make. So what is my hourly rate that I want to be paid through my business? I set that. So say for example, in this case, I think I put $30. So if I want to be paid $30 an hour and I can make, say for example, 150 stickers per hour, you will divide 30 by 150 to get the cost per item. 90 cents for materials, 20 cents for production wages, 40 cents for overhead expenses. That might be Wi-Fi, that might be your phone bill that might be your studio cost whatever that is and then overhead wages so you have to get paid for your time that you're doing things so cleaning and paying your bills going to taxes that kind of stuff post office runs gas that it costs to go to the post office those kinds of things so basically 90 cents for materials 20 cents for production wages 40 cents for overhead expenses and 20 cents for overhead wages this is all hypothetical I don't even know like this isn't real and then that all equals to a dollar seventy per stickers. So if you were going to go and do wholesale pricing for that, the most simplified version of this would be to multiply that base cost by two, and then you'll get your wholesale price, which is $3.40 in this scenario. So you would be making $1.70 per unit in profit. So every time you sell a sticker, you'd be making $1.70 to put in your pocket. So that is a very, very simple version of it. And more times than not, it is not this simple. I know a lot of businesses that do use the times two rule, for their business but for me it doesn't work like that because there are a lot of other hidden expenses at first i used the times two rule and then as i started going on with wholesale getting more sales paying some bills like paying for products ordering new inventory i started to realize that i wasn't charging enough and i wasn't making enough profit to actually cover all the expenses so i had to go in and adjust some numbers and make some changes and that's just trial and error and sometimes that's kind of the way you have to do it so here are some other things that i wish i knew when i started wholesale so one of the things i wish i did from the very beginning was to make a wholesale catalog and line sheet so i have two things that i use now for offering wholesale to my customers before i just had it on a ordering basis where if somebody would inquire about a product I would then go in and manually like figure out the prices and then send it back to them which I have no idea why I did that and it was way more difficult than it really needed to be now I have two things I have a catalog that I have on Canva I got it off of Etsy which is just a catalog template and then I went and I filled in everything the description the SKUs the price everything pictures and that's a, like a physical thing that they can see the pictures of and some of my retailers actually prefer to do a line sheet on Excel with just the names and the 
the quantities and you know their skew another thing was that i wish i made skews for all of my products from the very beginning i am now only trying to go in and add skews to all my products so that i have each design with a skew number and each like air freshener with a skew number and that makes it really easy for restocks for ordering and for inventory management because that is a huge thing that i struggled with from the beginning i really wish that i built an email list for my retailers from on fair because you can do that and you can send out emails quarterly monthly weekly whatever you want to do i wish that i started building that email list and actually utilizing the email marketing feature especially when it comes around to christmas season because it's usually super early for retailers because they have to order in all the products ahead of time to then sell them during the holidays christmas is a really big thing so i'll use that as an example but i would love to have sent out emails around august and september to kind of let retailers know like guys this is the time to order these are the christmas products these are the christmas punchito products that i'm offering they, they take like four to five weeks to make so if you want to place your orders in try to get them in asap so we can get them made for you and just those kinds of things offering deals building that customer loyalty with your retailers is really important if you want to kind of create longevity for your wholesale business another thing that i wish i started doing and that i've recently started doing is offering samples to my retailers of products that they haven't ordered in their order so for example if they order only stickers sometimes i'll throw in an air freshener sometimes i'll throw in a notepad for them and i know not every business is able to do this but i think it is really valuable because it opens the the door to some new product options for them maybe they didn't see them on your website maybe they didn't know that you offered that and maybe they were hesitant because they didn't know the quality of it and you sent them one and then they came back and they ordered a ton of them so i really like offering samples a lot i know a lot of my retailers really love when i do that i also wish that i started making thank you cards like wholesale thank you cards for my business from the beginning a lot of retailers have commented on the wholesale cards i do offer a coupon code on there as well and then i also have a little blurb about doing custom orders this is a great way to provide a little bit of extra information to your retailers because most of the time they're going to read that card it's at the top of all my orders they're going to see it they're going to read it and whether they toss it out or they don't the point is is that you're getting your message across and letting them know like hey like we offer custom orders we offer you know custom quantities you custom designs like whatever you you want to let them know a business thank you card for wholesale like specifically is really 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 great another thing is to check your inventory on a consistent basis i do mine weekly now because i didn't do it before and i always ran into inventory issues of overselling and underselling so i had now dedicate mondays to going in and counting my inventory and making sure that it's updated on fair shopify and etsy because i have three platforms that i sell on and that way i don't accidentally sell more than i have or you know make any inventory mistakes like that i also think Think that utilizing sticky notes and highlighters when you have a lot of orders for wholesale is really 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 important you guys have probably seen me prep wholesale orders before in studio vlogs but basically what i do is i usually set a couple colors for different types of orders so the way that i categorize my orders is any orders that have punch needle items in it get a specific color and then anything any orders that do not have punch needle get another color and this is because punch needle takes like i said three to four weeks sometimes four to five weeks to make so anything in that order typically will ship out with the punch needle unless the customer wants them to ship separately and that I can do but I do this because I am able to see you know what orders I need to work on what punch needle designs do I need to get started on what's going out on which day like it just really helps me get everything organized and then i also separate the orders by um united states and canada i do get a couple of straggler orders for like australia and things like that but typically it's from the states and from canada so i'll separate them so basically that is my thoughts on wholesale and kind of my advice to you when you're thinking about starting if you are i am really excited for you if you do think about doing wholesale it has been amazing for my business if you have watched my reset videos you'll see my income breakdown and wholesale does take up like 70 percent of my business revenue which is great and i love it and honestly it's so amazing getting to see my products into shops that i never would have ever had my stuff in if it wasn't for wholesale like i have my punch shield stuff my mugs my air fresheners in stores all over over the united states and all over canada which is so amazing and cool and i love it and i love getting to build relationships with my retailers and some of them i know like on a first name basis and we chat and we're basically friends at this point so it's so amazing to do this and this has been a really great part to my business and it has really helped me grow i'm so grateful to be able to have that like income flow and you know be able to offer wholesale pricing to people who would 
want to sell my items in their shop which is like what the heck you want to sell my stuff in your store that's so cool but yeah those are my tips i hope that you enjoyed this video if i didn't cover something that you were really wondering or you had like a really like burning question about leave it down in the comments below i always try to respond to your comments so you can leave your questions and i will be sure to answer them if i have some thoughts on them so yeah that's gonna be all for this week's video i I'm not uploading a studio vlog this week because I didn't film a lot last week. I was very, very sick. I had like the stomach flu or food poisoning or whatever it was, but I was ill. So this is the video that I am recording. I'm recording it on Sunday actually, and I'm getting it edited and posted tomorrow. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, like I said, and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe so you are notified of all future videos that I make because I do studio vlogs every single week except for this one. And I will see you guys all next week. Bye. Thank you.